Hello, welcome everyone to uh, MTRI's third installment of the Summer Seminar Series. My name is Luca and I'm uh, the lead field technician here at the MTRI and your moderator for tonight. Um, before we begin though, I would like to acknowledge that the MTRI is located in and we are meeting from Kaskowick, the uh, one of the seven districts of Mi'kmaq and home of the Mi'kmaq people. We acknowledge the treaties of peace and friendship and we thank the Mi'kmaq people for their generosity in sharing their homeland with us. Okay, so for anyone uh, possibly joining us for the first time tonight, or anyone that hasn't heard about the MTRI before, I'd just like to give a brief uh, background about us. Um, so the MTRI is a research-based nonprofit uh, nestled in southwest Nova Scotia near Cajun Kujik National Park, a national historic site, and within the Nova Scotia Biosphere Reserve. Um, our mission is to promote, sustain, and conserve biodiversity in Kaskawik and beyond. Um, now, I would like to welcome and introduce tonight's speaker, uh, Sarah Brown. Sarah is uh, the project coordinator for the Eternal Club, a nonprofit organization also based out of Nova Scotia. And she also recently graduated with a Master's of Science in Biology from Susie Curry's lab at Acadia University. And in fact, Sarah will return to us as a speaker again later this summer to present her master's research on uh, river rivulets, fish, and climate change. And tonight, however, she'll be sharing uh, some of her amazing work and some of the amazing work that the Tarnal Club does in the Maritimes. Um, before we begin the talk tonight, I would like to remind everyone to please keep your mics muted. And if you do have any questions during the talk, please type them in the chat window on Zoom or on Facebook, wherever you're watching. Um, and we'll also have a dedicated question period at the end of the talk for anyone that would like to ask their questions live. Um, and with this, I would like to hand over the seminar to you, Sarah. And um, yeah, really looking forward to it. Thank you so much. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me. Um, I We worked with uh, MTRI last summer, actually. We had someone come out and do a guided walk through Kejimakujik. So I'm I'm familiar with your work, and I think it's it's awesome. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be talking tonight about Terranaut Club, um, just who we are and what we do. A lot of people haven't really heard of us, but we've been based out of Nova Scotia for five years, and we're, we're growing really quick. So this is, uh, I'm excited to get the word out. Um, I could talk about this job forever. So there's going to be lots of photos. Um, and yeah, just kind of a background on our programs um, and our mission and stuff like that. Except we're not, there we go. Um, okay, so I just want to introduce myself. My name is Sarah Brown. My pronouns are she, her. Um, like Luca said, I have recently graduated from my master's of biology at Acadia University, but I'll be talking about that more um, at the end of August. So if you're interested in how climate change affect, affects tropical fish, come back August 31st. Um, but for now, I'm going to be talking about my time with Terranaut Club. So I've been the program coordinator since 2022. So this is my second year with them. Um, I actually started volunteering back in 2021. I got the opportunity through Acadia and I fell in love with it and then got offered this job shortly after. So I kind of do all the behind the scenes. So all of our bookings, um, like slotting the kids into the camp, sending out all the information, the schedules, stuff like that. And then I get to go to all the programs and meet the awesome kiddos Um and do all of that. So my email is there. It's also at the bottom of the screen on every slide. If you have any questions um, that I don't cover in this talk and we don't get a chance to talk about, please shoot me an email. Um, I also have our website at the bottom there. And then our social media is at Terranaut Club uh, everywhere. So just an overview of what I'll be talking about today. I'm going to go over about Terranaut Club. So our history, our mission, and what we do. And then I'm going to be talking about our different kinds of programs. So our summer programs, kind of who's on the team, what kind of programs we offer. Um, we have a kind of cool nomination selection process. So I'll get into that. Um, and again, there'll be lots of photos. Um, and then we also offer different kinds of programs. So we have a guest speaker series, um, data science and coding workshops. And new this year, we have day-long field trips. So I just want to promote these kind of year round activities because anyone who has heard of us think that we're just a summer camp, but we are a lot more than that. Um, and then I'll leave some time at the end for questions. So about Terranaut Club, starting off first, what is a Terranaut? Um, we get asked this quite a lot, and I simply say that you've heard of an astronaut, which is a space explorer, whereas a Terranaut, we are Earth explorers. So Terra is Latin for Earth, and the suffix not means explorer. So anyone who comes to our camps is a um, certified Terranaut and an Earth explorer. Um, Terranaut Club was founded as a Canadian nonprofit organization in 2018, and actually July 11th was our fifth birthday. 
So that was really exciting. We were we were at a program that day. So it was awesome to share that moment with a bunch of the, the little kiddos. Um, and generally, our mission is to encourage girls and underrepresented genders, which we call Girls Plus, um, ages 9 to 18 in maritime provinces to pursue STEM careers and become environmental leaders in their own communities. Um, and it's really awesome to see some of the kids reach out back reach back out to us and show us the things they've done at their school. One of them started an environmental club at their school because of what she learned at the, the camp. So it's really awesome to see that. And specifically, we aim to work with Girls Plus who are disadvantaged and or underrepresented. Um, and I'll get into that a bit more uh, later. So what do we do at Terra Not Club? We accomplish our mission by offering hands-on immersive programs at a pay what you can rate. So this helps us reach more of those disadvantaged backgrounds. Um, and they are centered around marine biology and wildlife conservation. So we have three different program age ranges. We have our little junior nuggets, which are ages nine to 12, um, our intermediate, our ages 12 to 15, and then our advanced are 15 to 18. So some of them have actually completed their first year at university and it's awesome to see them uh, come back and tell us what they learned at school. Some of them even go to Acadia because we have a lot of programs here and they fall in love with the school when we bring them here. Um, our program types, like I kind of mentioned earlier, we have our summer programs, which are multi-day overnight programs from June to September. Um, and then we have data science and coding workshops, which are half-day programs that we offer in both the spring and fall. We have new field trips this year, which are going to be day programs that will start this fall, and then they'll also be offered in the winter and spring. Um, and then we have what's called our guest speaker series, uh, kind of like this, I guess. It's um, an hour and a half online event offered uh, several times throughout the year where we have a uh, woman plus in STEM come kind of talk to us about their um, career and how they got to be where they are. So starting off with our summer programs, we have 12 programs being offered this summer between uh, June and September. We have four in each of our age ranges. Um, and then we offer two program streams. So either marine biology or wildlife conservation, but there tends to be a lot of uh, overlap between the two. Um, we like to keep our programs pretty small. So we cap them at about 13 participants because we want to make sure that everyone gets really engaged and has kind of one-on-one -on -one time with leaders to chat about whatever they want to chat about. Um, and we usually have four to six uh, staff and volunteers at each program. They are all pay what you can. So it's just donation based. Um, some kiddos aren't able to pay anything and we don't want to put any stress on the parent or guardian. We just want these kids to be able to get out in nature. Um, a lot of them say it's their first summer camp they've ever been to. So it's really great to try to give them um, that hopefully positive experience. Um, we really focus on hands-on learning. So we don't want to just sit them down in a classroom and just kind of talk to them. We do dissections, we go fishing, we do like trail cam analysis. Um, we do a whole bunch of different stuff, which um, is pretty awesome. And I get really excited being able to do it all too. Um, so they're primarily outdoors as much as we can this summer and the rain has really tested us. But, you know, we've officially camped in a thunderstorm. Um, our, our campsite was a lake. So we got through that. I think I think we can get through anything. Um, all of the food is included, which is is really nice. I mean, if you're a, a gluten free vegan with a nut allergy, we might ask for a little bit of help. But for the most part, all food is included. Um, we offer inclusive, supportive and fun environments. And um, as a queer woman in STEM, I can very much say that this is the most inclusive, accepting, amazing group of people I've ever worked with. Um, and it's fun. Like we all just have a really good time and there's no prior knowledge needed. So we teach things, assuming that you come in, you know, not having any background in biology. Um, we're not, you know, it's not supposed to be school. If you leave learning something, that's great. But we always say our top priority is safety. Keep everyone alive. Second priority is fun. We want you to have a good time. And then third is learning. If you learn something, that's awesome. So this is our team this summer. Um, if any of you are around Acadia, you probably know a few of these faces. So yeah, I'm Sarah. I am uh, have a master in biology and I'm the program coordinator. Our program lead this year is Lauren Leaf. Um, and she just finished her bachelor's of biology at Acadia. And she's, yeah, our lead. So she takes the, the lead in all of our programs and leads most of the activities. Uh, we have Hunter Hogan, who also finished her bachelor's in biology and is doing her master's in biology, studying um, uh, 
uh, chemical buildup and um, harmful contaminants in sharks down in Miami. So she has a really cool project going on. I won't pretend to know much about what she's studying. It goes pretty over my head, but it's awesome. Um, she works with field school down in Miami um, and she's our program assistant. And then our other program assistant is Katie. Um, she's doing her BS, her bachelor's in biology right now in Queens. Um, and she has more of a public health background. So it's nice to have that um, alternative background with people who want to maybe pursue med school. Um, and we have a bunch of awesome volunteers. We're always looking for more volunteers. So if you or anyone you know thinks that what I'm talking about sounds like something you might be interested in, shoot me an email um, and we'd love to have you join us. It's honestly summer camp for adults too. It's a, it's a really fun time. So I'm just going to talk quickly about um, what programs we offer. So um, again, this if you know anyone who might be interested in these, a lot of we're done five of our 12 programs this year, but um, we do still have room in a couple of them. And then we'll be offering all the same ones next year. So if this intrigues you or anyone you know at all, um, we'd love to have your, your kiddos out. So we have our Junior Wildlife Conservation Program, which takes place at Kejimakujik National Park, which is where uh, MTRI is based out of. So at this program, we focus on um, endangered Blanding's turtle nest monitoring. So uh, Kejimakujik does a lot of awesome endangered species monitoring one of which being their Blanding's turtles. So we work closely with the volunteers there um, and we help them do turtle surveys. And uh, last year we actually saw a female Blanding's turtle laying her eggs, which was super cool. Um, the way they kind of use their back legs to dig up the side of the road is something that I just found absolutely amazing. <coughs> I apologize, I am a little sick. <coughs> Um, we also do insect traps, um, something called a pooter. There's a photo of that a bit later, but I think it's a really cool way to catch insects um, and also just a fun word. Uh, and we do water quality monitoring, which all the kids get really excited about because they get to put the little tabs in the test tubes and shake it up. And they're like, I'm a scientist. Um, so that's always really exciting to see. Uh, and then we have two junior marine biology programs. So we have a level one and a level two. Um, at level one, we do a really cool lobster anatomy activity. So we bring in lobster and they're able to identify kind of all the external anatomy, you know, touch their first lobster. Um, we do snorkeling, which is always a favorite. We usually see a fish or two and then spend the rest of the hour just kind of trying to follow them around. Um, and we do uh, dissections at most of our programs. So at this one, we do a bivalve dissection. Um, and then we kind of do like a, a puzzle afterwards where we take whatever organs are still intact and try to like reassemble the bivalve. Um, and then at level two, we visit the um, Coldbrook Biodiversity Facility, which is an endangered salmon hatchery. Uh, and the staff there are amazing. They take us through how they age the salmon. Um, uh, they let the kids weigh and measure them, which is really cool. It's their first time touching a fish for a lot of them. Um, and again, we go snorkeling. And at this one, we dissect squid. And squid are my favorite animals. So I think that this is just the coolest dissection ever. I love helping them get the, the pen out, which is kind of like if squid had a backbone, you know, that would be the pen. And it's just, it's a scent. It looks like a piece of plastic. Um, and all the kids love to take theirs home, which I'm sure the parents don't love, but everyone goes home with, with a squid pen, which is pretty cool. Um, some of them even get the lens out of the eyeball, which is, you know, again, the parents just love, <laughs> love that. Um, and then we have new this year, our junior wildlife conservation at Fundy National Park. So this will be our first program in New Brunswick. Um, and we do, we'll, we'll be doing endangered salmon salmon monitoring. So we'll be kind of swimming down the river with the salmon. Um, we're doing an evening bat echolocation monitoring, um, some pollinator ID and native plant planting. So I'm very excited to see how this program turns out. So we've actually completed three of our junior uh, programs and I'm heading to Fundy tomorrow to do this uh, wildlife conservation program. So I'm really pumped about that. Uh, I just want to share some photos. These are all from this year. So um, yeah, we have, we get all the kids to set up their own tents and it's really exciting. The nine-year-olds can set up the tents honestly better than us sometimes. Like they're great at it. Um, we got all the kiddos at one program to try and make a tea for Terra Knot Club. That only took half an hour. Um, and then at the top there, yeah, we have the kids uh, weighing and measuring fish at the hatchery. Uh, we have a couple of them looking at the lobster where we do our anatomy dissection. Um, in the bottom 
bottom right, we have, we do a bird watching activity where we take the kids out. This was at Kajimakujik, um, and we, we look for birds. Um, we have some of the resource conservation team come out and uh, they bring some turtle models. So that's what's happening kind of in the bottom right there. We're measuring one of the turtle models. Um, one of our kiddos found a salamander when we were looking for insects. So um, they were really happy about that. And then we have our bivalve dissections. We have a couple of kids there, uh, trying to determine the anatomy in a bivalve, which I think is really hard, but they were able to do it, which was awesome. Um, and then on the bottom left there, we have our, our squid dissection. This is when they first got them. And I think these were the happiest faces we saw. A lot of them were more like, ew, um, and they get to name their squid. And my favorite squid name was uh, Squiddy McOo. So we get some, some pretty good names. Uh, so our intermediate programs, again, we have four. We have two programs on Bon Portage Island, which is a island that is um, Acadia operates on. So it's a research island where a lot of bird studies happen because it's home to um, petrels, which are this most adorable little seabird. They're just kind of little cotton balls. Um, and they make they have the coolest cry or like scream at night. The first time I heard it, I was terrified until I realized that it was just the birds. And it was exciting that we were hearing this because it meant that there were lots of them. Um, so yeah, we go to this island. We're really fortunate to be able to to head out there for two programs so we do um, a bunch of island exploration on both of them it's only about a kilometer long so we can see most of it um, and in the first program, we do pitcher plant dissections. So we go out and collect some pitcher plants on the on the mainland, and then we bring them out and usually find some really cool digested insects. Um, and then we set fish traps and do um, kind of measuring and counting of fish. And we do a chemical analysis of the plastics we find on the beach. Um, and then in the second one is where we actually get to do um, the storm petrol monitoring. So we have a um, a bird expert from Acadia come out and help us with the grubbing, which is just you like stick your hands in their little burrows um, and then you pull the baby birds out. So we're able to help do some um, monitoring and banding with them. Uh, and we also set up wildlife cameras. There's quite a few deer on the island. So we get some pretty great, uh, great pictures of those. We sometimes even see them walk past camp because they're not really used to having people around. So they think camp is uh, their home too. Uh, we have an intermediate marine biology program where we make baited remote underwater video systems or BRUVs, um, which is essentially just a bunch of tubing that you attach a GoPro to and a bait cage to, and you just put it out in the ocean and video what happens at the bait cage. Um, we've actually found quite a few endangered species um, swim by, which is pretty cool. Uh, we've also had like a seven crab fight over the food, which was pretty entertaining. Um, the kids also like laughing at our faces in the fisheye lens when we deploy it. So there's a lot of a lot of funny things that come up on the video. Uh, we do an invasive chain pickerel dissection, um, and last year we actually found a uh, barely digested frog in the stomach of one of the chain pickerel, which was pretty cool. Um, and then we do a whale watching tour in Lunenburg. Uh, we have yet to see any whales, but we do see many seals every time, and the boat ride itself is just a lot of fun. Um, and again, we go snorkeling and we do this one based out of the Morton Center, which Acadia is also um, uh, works out of along with Coastal Action. So we have a lot of great partner groups that we work with. Um, and then we have our Intermediate Wildlife Conservation, which is also at Kejimakujik National Park. Um, and at this one, it's in September. So it's around the hatchling time for the Blandings turtles. So we go um, monitor hatchlings. Uh, we do kayaking, hiking. Like I said, we had a, a guided hike from someone with MTRI last summer. Um, and then we do a lot of plant ID. And here's a bunch of photos from last year. So in the top left, we have um, on Bon Portage Island, there's fish in there and we're measuring and um, sexing um, and identifying the fish. Um, we have the kayaking down the Mercy River at Kejimakujik. Um, someone found a crab on Bon Portage. There's a bunch of them, but every time this, this kid found one, she had to come over and show me, which I thought was really nice. Um, the, the, the top right uh, one over is at Kejimakujik and they just have the most beautiful sunset. So I really like this photo because the girl on the right had no idea she was being photographed. She was just that happy to see a sunset, which I think is really cool. Um, and then the top right, we have our whale watching. These two kids did not take their eyes off the water the whole time. They were so excited to see a whale. 
Um, and then on the bottom, uh, right, those two are both on Bomb Portage Island. Actually, the bottom three. Yeah, we had some great weather that time. Uh, we get some pretty good campfires going on the island because there's um, no trees right around the pit. So we can get a, some pretty big fires going. Um, and then we have our boat ride that we take to the island, which is really exciting. It's uh, some of the kids' first time on a boat. Um, it's it's operated by one of our close friends, so it's nice to see him too. Uh, and then, yeah, the other two are also just on the island. Um, the bottom left is someone using a digital microscope to look at what we found uh, in the pitcher plants. And I think they found like a really rare worm. Um, I'm not great with my insect ID, but someone who was great with insect ID got really excited about what she found. So that was a, that was a fun day. And then our advanced programs, our first one is a bit different than the other ones. It's our Steminist Leadership Development. Uh, so this one's based out of Wolfville and we have leadership training and then volunteering at a junior level program. So we have returning kiddos uh, who loved it come back and they spend a day and a half developing an activity that they want to lead at a junior program. And then they come out with us to that junior program to lead that activity. And then they become one of our official junior leaders or, or leaders in training. Um, so we we had six come out this year, which was awesome. Two of them are coming with us tomorrow to Fundy and actually leading their own guided hike through one of the trails there. Um, and then we have an advanced wildlife conservation at Kejimakujik National Park, which I just got back from. Um, and we go to Keji Seaside for this one and do piping plover monitoring, which if you don't know piping plovers, they... I the best way I can describe them is a cotton ball with two sticks that just scurry around the beach. Um, they're like maybe this big, cutest birds I've ever seen. Um, so we go down there and every year we've been lucky enough to see some, which is really cool considering how endangered they are. Um, and we do kayaking and we actually did a um, coyote, bobcat and otter necropsy. This program with someone from Department of Natural Resources. Yeah, they came in and um, led just a really, really cool activity. We've, we've never dissected anything with fur. So it was really cool to have her, her come in and lead that. Um, and then we have two advanced marine biologies. One is tech and marine conservation. Um, we go to the ocean tracking network and learn about their tags and their gliders. Um, we practice putting pit tags into fish. Um, we go fishing. We do uh, dogfish dissections. We're having a couple of people from Deep Sense, which is a really cool ocean AI group um, that they're just doing amazing things with um, AI involving ocean technology. Um, so that's a really cool program. And then we have our, I'd say fan favorite is Advanced Marine Biology, Marine Mammals, where we go up to the Digby area and go whale watching off Briar Island, um, which is really exciting for, for me and everyone involved. Um, and we actually have a PhD student from Dalhousie coming up to teach us about her research on Cape Breton pilot whale populations. Um, and she's helping us do an Atlantic uh, white-sided dolphin skeleton puzzle. So I think that'll be a really, really cool activity. And we have done two of these programs already and have two of them coming up in uh, August. And here are just some programs from that. So we do invasive chain pickerel dissections there in the top left. Um, we also visit Back to the Sea Society's touch tanks um, at our tech program. So that's us there last year. Um, we do a lot of tide pooling at Kedji Seaside and we found the teeniest, tiniest crab. I don't even think you can see it in the photo. Um, and then that top kind of middle photo there with the cups and the straw, that's a pooter. Um, so that is an insect trap. So it's essentially two cups um, with the open ends uh, taped together and then a straw cut in half stuck on each ends with pantyhose on one side and you seal everything up real tight and then you go over to a bug and you suck it up in the straw, but it won't go all the way up because of the pantyhose. Um, so then the bugs get trapped in, in those cups there and then we identify them after. So they tend to enjoy that. Um, the top right is us doing the piping plover monitoring at uh, Seaside. And then the bottom two on the right are just us enjoying our time at uh, Kejimakujik. Again, they have great sunsets there. Um, and then more plover monitoring. And then that bottom middle is, I try not to include too many of the necropsies just in case anyone got the weebie jeebies, but that was, um, I believe that was one of the bobcat uh, necropsies there. Um, and then, yeah, the, the Blanding's turtle monitoring. And on the bottom left, we did a, a winter skate dissection, which uh, one of the kids was really amazed at just how she'd never felt like a fish before. So just being able to feel that was her face was really exciting. 
So I'm just going to quickly, I won't get too much into this, but just about like the nomination process and how we pick um, the kiddos. So participants must be nominated by an adult that knows them well. So parent, guardian, other family member, coach, teacher, et cetera. Um, and they must meet at least one of the nomination criteria of either coming from a disadvantaged or low income background, coming from an underrepresented background of either African, Canadian, Indigenous, Hispanic or Latinx, um, being a first generation immigrant. So having immigrated to Canada, having led a science or environmental initiative at a school or in their community, um, or they are passionate about science, the animals or the environment. Sorry. Um, so we get quite a few nominations. Uh, we try to do this early in the spring and then our selection process. So to advance our mission of reaching out to underrepresented and disadvantaged backgrounds, 50% of the seats in each program are reserved for participants who are disadvantaged and or underrepresented. So we fill all these seats first. Um, and then the remaining seats are met. Are met Oh my gosh, sorry. The remaining seats are filled with nominees who meet um, some of the other criteria. So just kiddos who are passionate about science. Um, and on the nomination form, we ask for, we have a couple of questions about, you know, tell me a bit about your nominee and why do you think they'd benefit? So we really use those answers um, to see who we think would benefit most from the programs. And some of the some of the nominations we get are really just quite beautiful. Um, and we're so excited to have these kids out and uh, learning with us. <laughs> I'm really sorry. <laughs> um, so we also have something called the Earn Your Way Back initiative. And this is what really helps us, um, what shows us that the kids are taking what they're learning and kind of being, you know, STEM enthusiasts in their community. So this applies to returning summer program participants. So those who had been to a summer program before and want to come back. Um, so they have to complete an earn your way back activity to demonstrate that they've taken the lessons they've learned with us to heart. And then they write just a tiny five to 10 sentence report about what they did and what they learned. Um, so some examples, we have a lot of really artistic kids, um, not me, but a lot of our kiddos are really, really artistic. Um, so create a STEM inspired illust illustration, like a scientific illustration of an organism or habitat or a sketch of a woman or underrepresented gender in STEM. Um, some kids draw their parents in like their biologist jobs, which is really cute. Um, we have a leave it better than you left it. So choose an area like a beach, park, trail, other public space and conduct your own environmental cleanup. This one's awesome because the kids kind of really realize how dirty their environments are. You know, if you're just walking, you don't necessarily think of it. But if you're out there trying to pick up every piece of garbage, a lot of their reports are like, I'm very disappointed in my community and like, I want to make it better. So um, we hate to see that it's really messy, but we love to see that, you know, they they're upset about it and want to do something about it. Um, and then new this year, we say, if you come to one of our online guest speaker events or one of our data science workshops, that counts as an earn your way back because it means you're still thinking about Terra Not Club outside the summer. Um, so I just want to quickly talk about um, our funding because, you know, these programs are pay what you can. So how the heck do we get the money to do all of this? Um, well, we recently got an NSERC promo science grant, which is awesome. We've been um, applying for this grant for quite a few years and we finally got it. It, it lasts three years, which is awesome. Um, we have a really great collaboration with Parks Canada, which allows us to go to uh, Kejimakujik National Park and National Historic Site and Fundy National Park. Um, they kind of cover all the costs of those programs and are really just excited to have us out and learning. Um, we get some corporate group donations, and then we do have some revenue from the pay what you can Um just that would not be enough to cover the cost of the program. We do have sticker and magnet fundraisers. So uh, everything I have kind of shared on the right there, we have on our Etsy shop, um, which you can also get to through our website. So we have t-shirts, um, car decals, and then we have a bunch of really cool stickers. We just released these new pride designs, which I think are really awesome. Um, so yeah, we do raise uh, quite a bit of money through that. And then we're always looking for new collaborations and sponsorships. We are um, in about halfway through waiting to hear back on our charitable status. Um, status, But yeah, we love getting new uh, collaborations and sponsorships. 
So I'll just quickly go over our other activities that are not the summer programs because we do we do things year round. So our guest speaker series, um, we believe it's critically important for girls and underrepresented genders to see themselves represented in STEM careers. So we've developed this series to offer our participants more. It is virtual, unfortunately, because a lot of our um, top speakers are coming from all over Canada or the world, really. Um, and we don't have the money to fly someone in from Miami, unfortunately. So we do um, virtual talks with uh, women X in these fields. Um, they're open to Girls Plus who live in the Canadian Maritimes or Florida. And this is because we actually have a sister organization in Miami that is run out of the same um, the same program that Hunter does her master's out of. So she's working with field school and we have a very close relationship with field school. So once every about two years, we offer a program down in Miami where they actually get to go out on the shark research boat and um, basically be shark researchers for a couple of days. So they also qualify for our, our guest speaker series. Um, and these events are free and take place uh, at various times throughout the year. They're all on Zoom and they're an hour and a half long. So since I've joined Terranaut, we've had uh, four. So we had Taylor Brown, who was a, a seabird or puffin um, researcher uh, out in Newfoundland. We had Dr. Melanie Coombs, who's an associate professor at Acadia, and she studies um, immune system and colon cancer research. Uh, we had Amani Weberschultz, who is a PhD student working with field school down in Miami. So she is studying sharks and basically how their scales let them do what they do. Um, and then our most recent guest speaker was Dr. Ellen Boyd, who was a uh, emergency veterinarian based out of New Brunswick. So she came and talked to the kiddos about how she became a vet. Um, it was a very windy road. So it was it was a great talk to see, you know, even if you start out thinking that you want to be one thing, you can end up being totally something else. So that was a really great uh, message that she shared. And then we have our data science and coding workshops. They are also offered at three different age ranges, our junior, intermediate, and advanced. These are all based out of Nova Scotia. So we have them in um, Wolfville in the spring and in Halifax in the fall. Uh, they are also pay what you can, and they are led by our Terranaut Club president and our resident coding expert, Danielle. So Danielle is a data scientist. She has been do she did her master's and she's doing her PhD. Um, I can't even try and explain what she's doing because R hurts my head. Um, but the way she is, she basically taught me how to code. Um, and the way she's able to teach nine-year-olds how to code is honestly just amazing. Um, a lot of them leave being like, I want to be a data scientist, which is really cool. Um, they're also open to girls plus ages nine to 18. Um, these are small, honestly, smaller than our summer programs because she loves to give one-on-one -on -one time with all the kids. Um, they're welcoming, inclusive environments and designed for all skill levels. So you don't even have to had touch a computer before coming to one of these workshops. She will make you understand how to code, um, which is really awesome. And they're based out of, these ones are based out of Acadia, which is really great that we're able to um, use that lab space. And then new this year, we have field trips. These are day long programs. Um, again, pay what you can. And the idea of this is that we just want you to be a field researcher for a day. So we are looking for different groups to collaborate with to be like, hey, can we give you, you know, 15 extra sets of hands one day doing whatever you need to do. So we have one that's going to happen at Bundy National Park uh, towards the end of October, where we're going to help the park staff release endangered salmon back into the rivers. Um, we're also looking at one potentially on like an eel research boat to be extra hands on the boat. Um, so these are still in progress. But yeah, the, the goal is to be a field researcher for a day. And they're only one day long. So since it's during the school year, there's a lot uh, less commitment. And yeah, there's there's many other to come we're hoping having we're hoping to have as many as um eight this this fall so yeah that's my time i have no idea how long i talked sorry i i didn't time this before but um i'll be happy to answer any questions um please email me um, my email's there uh we also have a mailing list you can sign up through our website um yeah, it's just it's a really great group of people. Everyone is awesome to work with. I've I've never had better coworkers and the kids they say things that will just make your heart melt. Um yeah, it's a it's it's a great job. I I've always wanted to be an, an environmental educator and uh and I'm I'm very happy that's that's the field I chose. So, yeah, I'm happy to take any questions. 
Thank you so much, Sarah. That was a fantastic talk and I uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, what a great organization the Turnout Club is and I knew so little about it. And now I feel like I know so much about it. Yeah, so thank you so much. It was great. Um, we'll now move into the question period. So for anyone watching live, feel free to ask your questions now. And we'll also be sharing the questions from the chat in a moment. So if you have any questions live, feel free to ask them now. I have a question. Is Jane here? Hi, sir. Thank you so much. That was just an amazing presentation. And like Luca, I really didn't know much about the Turnout Club before now. I guess one question I have is, um, how do you promote the club? How do you kind of find the kids who really need you? Yeah, so uh, we do rely a lot on word of mouth. So kids who have come previously, uh, we get them to kind of share everywhere. We share... Um, over like Instagram, Facebook, social media. Um, we put flyers up around kind of the Wolfville, Windsor, Halifax area, just because that's where all of our staff are based. Um, uh, I did have a couple kids who said that they found out about us through one of these flyers. So um, they are working, but one of our, I, I'd say biggest uh, hurdles that we're still facing is trying to get the word out to, to more people. Um, there's a, a camp website that I looked into to promoting, um, but since we're still um, operating at, at not the biggest budget, we just couldn't afford their rates. Um, but we do get a lot of, you know, oh, my friend went to your program last year and it looked awesome. So um, we do rely heavily on and teachers. Uh, we have quite a lot of schools plus contacts that we send out. So a lot of the more um I'd say disadvantaged or underrepresented kiddos are getting nominated by their teachers at school. Um, yeah. That's that's great. Thank you so much. What a great program. I wish there'd been a turn up club when I was a little girl. <laughs> that's what I said. That's why I love this job, because it's it's like I get to go to the summer camp I always wanted. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, do we have any any other questions from our live audience here? Feel free to go ahead. Yay. Marie McIndoe says she's really happy to see attendance is open to Girls Plus and uh, that you recognize the need for that and STEM and Girls Plus. So yeah, and I agree with that. It's, uh, yeah, it's really fantastic to see this. Um, I do have a question. Um, how can one get in touch with you about volunteering if one wanted to? Like, who do I contact? Is that you? Me, yeah. So uh, <laughs> quite literally, just just shoot the the email, the yeah coordinator at Terranaut Club. Hey, I want to volunteer. Um, and then we we figure something out. Unfortunately, we do only take um, women and underrepresented genders as volunteers. <laughs> um, but we have we do have like um, if there's organizations that are coming in to lead and they say, you know, our, our best staff member is identifies as a man, like we do, that's fine. You know, we want kind of the best knowledge to come in, but in terms of who we're putting forth at the programs, um, all the staff and volunteers are, are women or underrepresented genders. Um, but yeah, you would just shoot me an email, you know, maybe a little bit about yourself. Um, and then we'd, we'd figure out what programs we're in need of volunteers for, and we'll kind of uh, go from there. Yeah, and I do have another question. So yeah. I see you're you're extending, you know, you're moving into New Brunswick. And is there any is there any other other field you would like to expand to? I know you have your marine sector, and then you have your wildlife conservation. Is there anything else you would like to cover in the future that you're looking into? I'm I'm not entirely sure about uh, streams, but we are trying to expand geographically. Um, so we were, we almost had a program in PEI this summer. We just kind of started the the planning a little too late. So we, we couldn't make it work, but I think next summer we're definitely gonna, um, migrate out into PEI and this partnership with Parks Canada is, is really promising because they're like, you know, we have parks all across Canada. We, is there a park in BC that your, your kids would really love to see, like, let's figure out how to get you there, like Newfoundland, you know? So, um, I think there's a lot of potential with this, with this collaboration to kind of see a lot more of Canada. Um, so I think when, when we say marine biology and wildlife conservation, that's like the, the goal that we stick to, but it is still quite broad. It's, it's more so just, um, STEM and, and 
it's more so biology based. So it would be interesting to see some more like chemistry or engineering focus camps. Um, all of our leaders right now just have a background in biology. So it, we need to kind of hire someone on who'd be able to teach that with having the knowledge. Um, but yeah, definitely looking to expand um, geographically, hopefully in the next couple of years. Very cool. Sarah, I just yeah. want to echo the comments from Luca and Jane and everyone else. Like amazing program, incredibly inspiring. Uh, your energy is so infectious. I love it. Um, I'm just curious, uh, curious, do you have a like a recipe for a successful program? Like what do you think are kind of essential elements to really push you past like the standard lecture type kind of learning environment? Yeah, um, I'd say that all of our staff have the same kind of, um, I, I guess my energy, you know, I've I've been told it's it's a positive energy. So we we like to keep that. And um, when we're interviewing our staff, we kind of, I don't want to say we go off vibe, but like we we can tell, you know, if someone's going to fit in and mesh with the kids. And like, I'm not going to lie to you. These programs are hard. Like at the last one, I had to cry in my car at one point because the tents were flooded. Some of our food was expired. The good food got dumped on the ground. Like there was just so many fires to put out all at once. But I think, um, you know, just having a team who a works really well together. Like we had a full week of staff bonding where we just got to know each other and hung out and went out for dinner. Um, and I think that was really important. Uh, yeah, I think just going into it, having to keep a positive attitude, like knowing something's going to go wrong, whatever that may be. And just being like, we are equipped to handle this. You know, we just want the kids to have fun. And I mean, we're all um, have like a, a bachelor in biology. So we know we know that we're going to know at least a little more than the kids. But we really try to focus that we're not here to make you learn something like we just want you to have a a good time in nature. Like I feel like kids these days are are growing up a lot more inside with all the social media and like the nine year olds have phones now. Um, so our, we just like to push, you know, leave your phones at home, come hang out in nature. Um, we do a survey at the end. And one of the questions is, do you feel more connected to nature? And I'd say like 90% of our kids say yes when they're leaving. Like I want to spend more time outside. So yeah, just just trying to keep a positive attitude and being real with them, you know, being like, it's not perfect. Like field work, we didn't see a turtle today. Like that science that happens, but we're gonna have a great time anyways. Um, I don't know if that answered your question. Sorry. Yeah, I did. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. All right. So, do we have any more questions here? Okay. So, if there's no more. And um, with this, then, yeah, I would like to say thank you again, Sarah, for your talk. It was really great. And uh, also thank you to everyone else that was uh, joining us tonight. Yeah, James, just saying super presentation, great program. Best of luck uh, growing, Sarah. Um, yeah, and same for me. I can just echo that, too. And, yeah, we would also like to thank uh, the Region of Queens for supporting us and making this uh, seminar possible tonight. And as always, everyone that's listening still, you can stay up to date with our seminar series on Facebook, on Instagram. And if you would like to watch the seminar today again, if you missed it or you only, you know, came in halfway through, you can watch the seminar again on our Facebook Live video or our YouTube channel. And don't forget, the MPRI is hosting seminars weekly through July and August. And uh, next week's speakers will be... Um, Kathy LeBlanc and David Chapman. And Kathy and David will be sharing their traditional te teachings about the moon cycles and their relation to the natural history of Mi'kma'ki with us. So very interesting talk next week as well. And that seminar will be held at the same time from seven to eight um, next Thursday. And yeah, you can join us either online or you can come to our office and join us here, have some tasty snacks that we have prepared for you. And that's on nine uh, Mount Merritt Road here in Kent right next to Ketchum Kujik National Park. So yeah, we hope all of you stay well. And I'm also hoping to see all of you and many more again next time soon. And with that, I hope you all have a good night. And thanks again, Sarah. See you soon. End Thank of August. <laughs> yes, yes, I'll be back. <laughs> Thank awesome. you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.